click on Web3 Enabler Setup to connect to the blockchain monitoring system. As you can see, all the instructions are detailed for CRM users so that they are not lost, of course. So let's go to the setup. We're going to click on Authorize My Org. So for the demo purposes, here we are connecting with our Sandbox account. So here, this is Web3 integration at moon.com, but of course it will be the one from your company. And we've logged in, as you can see, installation succeeded, Web3 enabler connected. Congratulations. Full information is in the user guide, but the main objects you need to understand are the following. First, the org wallets. These are the wallets that belong to your company. Then the account wallets. These are the wallets that belong to external companies, so your accounts or, if you prefer, your customers. Then the asset tokens. This stores full information about the tokens, including conversion rates, because Web3 Enabler is fully multi-currency aware, so this allows you to designate exchange rates to the fiat currency or the fiat currencies of your choice. And at last, inbound and outbound transactions. This displays information about all the blockchain transactions, so here are stored both chain data, only manageable by the integration users, and transaction data, which is editable by users with the Web3 Enabler admin permission, in case you need to manually handle exceptions. We're going to click on Asset Tokens here. Here, for the sake of the demo, we're going to create a USDC token, the one from Circle. Notice that you can set the date of the conversion rate for extra precision in your counting or budget management. Here, this is not necessary because we have a one-to-one -one conversion rate. This is the principle of USDC to USD. But of course, we could imagine that uh, in a multi-currency system where you would have to convert USDC to a specific fiat currency. Again, let's create a second asset token. And this is how you list the cryptocurrencies you want to be paid in. Now let's see the org wallet menu. The org wallets menu is basically listing all the wallets on which you want to receive funds. So here, for example, we're going to create a MetaMask on iPhone wallet. So basically, this will be the one on an iPhone from a person using MetaMask. We're selecting all the networks. And now, as you can see, there is a connect button here. And as you can see, we're now prompted to sign in with Ethereum and we can choose between a variety of wallets. So for this demo, we're using Wallet Connect and it's pretty easy. You just have to scan the QR code with your phone. So it's a phone wallet. And so when this is done, Web3 Enabler on your desktop will tell you to save your wallet. Of course, this can be done by a few persons in your org. It can be done by the accounting department or a sales rep, for example. Really, any person who's got access to the wallet. And so we're saving the wallet address, and it's been successfully connected. Refreshing and going back to the org wallet, you can see that now you have a wallet address and a QR payment link that you can send to your customers. Look at this little tick box here. Test networks. If this tick box is checked, then transactions on the test network are reported to Salesforce. Only the chain data is recorded, not the transaction data. This is to avoid accidentally processing these transactions. If the tick box is not checked, then testnet transactions are not reported. About the link you can see here, it is stored in Salesforce. For the demo, we will click on it and scan the QR code. But in real world conditions, you would potentially email or SMS those links. They are fully available within Salesforce, so you may include them in notifications and other Salesforce automations. The mapping of chain data to transaction data is set via Salesforce flow. So if you want to make a different business decision, perhaps allowing certain testnet transactions for internal testing purposes, you should deactivate the managed package flows and then clone them, then create custom flows for your business. Allowing your customers to send payments is quite similar. This time we're not creating an org wallet, but we're creating an account wallet. 
We're going to name it account2 because that's the name of the account we have on our test cell phone for this demo. And now connecting the customer's wallet is pretty simple. It's just that the customer is going to receive an email, either manually sent or automatically sent by your sales rep. So for this demo, we're doing it ourselves, and that's why the, the background is black. It's because we're using the incognito mode to not be logged on our previous account. And as you can see, it's the same process overall. We can save this wallet address as well. And now we're told, wallet connected. Back to Salesforce and back to the account wallet, we can see that the QR payment URL has appeared and the wallet address has appeared. Again, we're ticking the box to put this into test wallet mode. And as you can see, there's a QR code and again, a public address.